Is this all you've got? <laughs> <laughs> here I am, Dom Familiar here, everyone. Thank you so much. We are back in action. I was just telling Leon, I live on the North Shore of Long Island, and we had like three feet of snow. And in the midst of this blizzard, it was coming down the wind. I walked outside in my pajamas. I held my arms out and I said, is this all you got? Oh, on. Give me some more. Give me some more. Bring it on. We're here today. Mapex All Access. I'm so honored to have Leon Cottrell. Leon, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Dom. I'm so happy to be here. It's, it's definitely a great opportunity. Great, great to just share energy with you man oh man well listen, listen I, i'm gonna steal some energy from you we, <laughs> we met many many years ago at mapex drummer of tomorrow yep and uh so we go back a long time ago and it was just so great to to meet you then and have all the incredible things that you're doing with your career and what's happening you're so into the drumming you know intensity of what you're doing and it's, it's such a wonderful story so i want to start at the beginning leon you were you were young you were influenced your dad played drums correct yes Fantastic. So when did you first kind of hear him play drums? Uh, in my mom's belly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's very interesting because I started playing at two is when, like, they said I actually held a beat and, like, walked up to the drums and played. Um, but they really say I was playing before them because all my brothers and sisters used to just give me drumsticks or they said I was beating on everything. So <laughs> now are you are you from a musical family? Do any of your brothers and sisters play play instruments? Um yes, we all play drums. Everybody plays drums. <laughs> Even my mom. My mom can play too a little bit. <laughs> oh man, I'd love to hear your mom play that's yeah. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Yeah. So so they all play drums. So um mm -hmm. how many siblings do you have? I have five brothers and four sisters. So it's and ten of us total. Where are you in the in the pecking order? Which one? I'm, you? I'm the baby. You're number ten. Yes, I'm number ten. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> but you start. So you're hearing drums. You know, you know, from 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 when you're in your mother's womb, you're hearing drums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. your dad, who was your dad playing with at the time? Who was he working with? Um, at the time I was born, I think he had just stopped. Um, well, they had just moved from LA to Tucson, Arizona, which is where I was born. Okay. Um, so I don't think he was currently playing with anybody. Um, but he was also playing around town with a cover, a couple of cover bands. Um, one called the Cadillacs, but they did like, uh, rockabilly music. Nice. Um, and he did some jazz, some, some smooth jazz stuff. I remember him, but I don't exactly remember. Like, oh, he had a a blues band. I can't remember the name, but there was a blues band that he was in that they did a couple of albums. And um, I used to be his roadie. I grew up being a roadie all my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? Is uh. I did my first gig with him when I was nine. Well, I was going on gigs with him before I was nine, but like I actually played. Uh, he had a show um, where both of our kits were set. He had two kits set up. And oh. um, I played the first half, and in the second half of the show, I got scared, I guess, and I went to the bathroom and never came back. <laughs> <laughs> My brothers and sisters still tease me about that to this, till this day. So and it's pretty that, funny. That <laughs> they should tease you. That's what the <laughs> things do for sure. That's funny. So yeah. How old do you when, when you first you started playing around two? So how mm -hmm. old were you when you kind of had you know your own drum set? You know, were you playing your dad's kid or? Um. Oh, I think probably like at nine. I think I got. Well, I had a Rogers kit that was his that he got um and just had for a long time so when when i first started playing the first drum set that i put together was that rogers kit so i don't i think i was maybe three or four five maybe yeah something like that but that's what i played on for a long while until i got a um it was a slinger kit that he had nice 
that he got another he got another kitten so he gave me the slingerland kit because i of course young kid tore up the rogers kit <laughs> taking it apart playing it everywhere <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me a rogers he gave me the slingerland kit and was like don't mess this one up so i had that one for a while until i was able to um I think the kit from church, one of the guys, they got a new kit, and then I got that kit from church. So, oh, is it interesting. So, in, in the, in, did you did you play at church? Did, did you, I did. Mm -hmm. So, how, yeah. how how old are you when you started playing at church? Uh, probably about around the same time, five, six, seven, something like that. Interesting. And so, so you know, I, I always, you know, I, I I love the fact that some of these church bands are just so fantastic. Yeah, the level of musicianship that they have, and of course, they are. They are, you know, spiritually empowered to to mm -hmm. play music, which is so great. Tell me about what it was like with the experience of, of playing in church. Um, it was really, really great. Church kind of like sets you up for learning fast and being able to um, get stuff on the fly because it changes in church so quick. Like you could study the whole list that they sent you. And then as soon as you get there, if there's a couple of altos or sopranos that didn't come, they're not doing that song. So <laughs> now they're throwing another song at you that you either have to remember or have to pick up really fast. And so like, I kind of, I kind of give credit to that being the reason why I can learn and pick up so fast. Cause nowadays this, you play a song for me one time, and I pretty much have it. But that's like a like a training process, is what that was. That was like yeah, a, for sure. Wow, interesting. So, so, it, it, what, so, what kind of songs you, you're doing? You know, obviously spiritually based songs. Yeah, yeah. It was gospel, um, contemporary gospel stuff. Um, some contemporary Christian stuff. Right. Um, it's kind of like a mix of both, but it was mostly gospel till I was around like thirteen, fourteen. And then I got I discovered Stephen Curtis Chapman, and that kind of like put me on to the contemporary Christian side, and I just love that music. So I don't know who was playing drums for him at the time in the early '90s, but it it definitely changed my whole way of thinking and playing. Well, that's interesting. Let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about. So, was there any music you were listening to at the time? You know, was there, was there any? albums or bands that you were listening to oh yeah mint condition um my dad comes from the uh like 70s early 80s like la musician circuit yeah so he was playing with like um some of the motown stuff and so i definitely listened to all that up until i discovered my mom showed me Stephen Curtis Chapman. She brought a CD home and I'm like, who is this? I put it on and the drums were great. Tones sounded great. Boy, how fantastic. So, so you're exposed to it. So your mom is the one that kind of opened the door for you to kind of think a little differently musically. Oh yeah, she's always, she's always like kind of thrown a different side of stuff at me um, and kind of made sure I was well rounded. Yeah, my dad always wanted me to just play, play, play. He always just said practice, practice, practice. But as far as like being rounded, my mom kind of like did that. Hmm. So what did she? So so you know. And again, your mom played some drums. Did, did she? Did, and did anybody she, play any other instruments? Um. Well, I have a brother who's a producer as well. Um. Nobody really played any other instruments. Everybody just kind of stuck with drums or drumline. Like I had one brother who was in a drumline. Um, he was a snare. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like all drums, just drums. <laughs> that, did that influence you by hearing your brother playing, you know, rudiments and and, and drum core kind of stuff? Um, yeah, too. Well, because we moved to Arizona and moved away from California when I was born, I kind of didn't. I wasn't around that right. part. He was still in California, so. And he was in the Navy as well. So he traveled a lot. So he would just tell me, you know, certain stuff. This is a paradiddle. Mama, daddy, mama, daddy. That's what, that's mama, daddy, mama, daddy, mama, daddy. That's what every, every my, my dad stressed that to all my brothers and sisters before I was born. And then they kind of collectively stressed that to me. So. Well, what a, what, what a beautiful story of, of everyone being involved in drums and rhythm and, and, and just, just the, the fact of you being influenced by hearing everybody play yeah that's an incredible beginning so when did you start jamming with other musicians 
Um, well, I had a couple of friends, um, Jonathan Thomas and David, and we kind of like used to go at my friend David's garage and play. And that was like, I want to say 11 or 12 or 13, something like that. Um, but you know, at church, that was definitely playing with other musicians. Yeah. Um, but really kind of like those two are like the first ones that I really kind of played with other musicians, just trying to create and just play whatever we thought we knew <laughs> at the time. Fantastic. Absolutely. Fantastic. So you, you jam with some musicians, you're playing some stuff, you know, are you, are you, and you're playing, you know, all different types of tunes. I mean, you, you, you got a, a real good feel for a lot of different genres. You can play a lot of different genres. I mean, where, yeah. Where'd that come from? Um, kind of, well, growing up in Arizona, um, you know, on the radio, you hear there's, there's for a long time, there wasn't really just a, like a rap station and a, and a, a Latino station or a jazz station. There were those, but everything was kind of like mixed up a little bit. And so like in middle school at dances, they would play two rap songs. They would play a Tejano song. They would play a cumbia and then, then it would be like, um some pop or you know so i've kind of always been forced to be in a melting pot of just different genres and then my dad always just kind of made sure that whatever genre i played that i played it authentically he would hate when i would play something that's not like how it goes <laughs> so. that's, a, that's a great standard i mean <laughs> you want to be as authentic as possible in any yeah. style of playing and that's just great that your dad kind of instilled that in you. That's a, that's a real good lesson. Yeah. Yeah. But um, going to different gigs with him, because he played different stuff, like uh, there would be a smooth jazz gig that he would play that I would have to be his roadie. So I would be hearing all that. Then I would hear the blues. He did blues. He played in a blues band. And so I would hear that. And, then, you know, he would play in the rockabilly band or, you know, some top 40 band and stuff like that. So I was always kind of like, you know, just hearing different stuff. Boy, fantastic. But it's, you know, you're, it, it's almost like the, your informative years, you're being, you know, you're being seeped into this different type of music. You're learning, you're around your family where they're all playing drums. You're in this, you're in this big pot that's being stirred up. Yeah, yeah. Drums and stuff. It really, it really <laughs> So now you're, you're playing with different bands, you're doing the church gigs. So mm -hmm. you're in school. Mm -hmm. Did you ever take any private lessons at all? Um, I did when I was, I think I was seven and eight. Um, a guy by the name of Pete Swan, really, really great drummer, really great guy yeah. uh, in Arizona. I did with him for a little bit, but um, I think after a while, I think maybe football kind of just took over. Yeah. And I don't think he really thought that I needed the lessons as much, you know, and he did. He had a lot of students, so I don't think he had all, all the time to Thank to you. give me the advanced learning that I needed. So it was more just like, just go home and practice because he would show me something and then it would be like, I got it right then. So <laughs> he was like, what's the point of you even? <laughs> oh, that is that is great. Well, you you already had some great experience on your own. Yeah. Process. So you, you 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 did you so they didn't you didn't work on any books at all. You didn't do anything like that, right? Uh, single patient book. He gave that. That was the first thing he gave me. Oh wow. Well, yeah. He as soon as I walked in there, my first lesson, he said, "Take this book. If you learn this book, you'll be a great drummer." <laughs> <laughs> so I I think I practiced that book. Oh, I don't maybe a thousand times. Even now, I still, even now, sometimes I'll, if I don't have one, I'll go find it and just go back and, you know, because I'm, I'm totally self-taught, like literally totally self-taught. I've never had any, any school in, I didn't take music in high school. I didn't take music in college. I've just basically kind of just watched and been a sponge and, you know, been around people. My dad would always take me to gigs or like concerts and stuff like that. So. You know, I remember going and watching Boney James and his drummer. I can't remember his name, but he was just amazing. Like he was just 
blazing the drums. And, you know, that just caught my attention. So, and I'm able to watch and learn and implement, you know, just by watching. So. Well, it's fantastic to have that. Kind I of definitely thing. would have loved to have the schooling because it kind of would, would be a little bit easier for what I'm doing now. <laughs> but, you well, know. As, as always, as I always say, it is never too late. That is true. To and, go back and start to brush up on some things. That, you know, yeah. I am still a student of this art form. I'm still asking yeah. questions. I, I'm a, a real book nut. I, I yeah. want drum books. I buy them and I just go through them. And yeah. I, drum book. If I get one idea out of a drum book that I spent money on, if it's a $15 <laughs> book and mm -hmm. I get one idea out of it, I felt that that was worth the investment. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I always kind of, you know, if I get two or three or ten ideas out of it, it's yeah. a home run. So <laughs> about the, the process of learning, but uh, well, that's yeah. fantastic. So now you get ready. You get ready to go to, to you know, out of high school. Did you, were you involved in any of the school bands at all? Did they have school band programs? Um, in middle school, they used to have me play in the jazz band. I played in the jazz band. I was in band. Um, Joe Jameson was my band teacher. He's a trumpet player. But I was really advanced. So it was he didn't really have me play in the band that much. Whenever they had pet band or jazz band, then I would play. I would play for the orchestra. Nice. A lot of stuff like that. So um you had to, you had to know some reading then at that point then right uh a little bit a little bit but a lot of times uh i already knew the song because of my dad just sticking everything at me like they would throw up a chart for birdland i'm like well i kind of already know that already so <laughs> i can fake read it <laughs> so what? then he started to notice that i was fake reading and so he sat me down and taught me how to read certain things but it wasn't really where I was in class and I had to read in front of everybody and all that. He never really did that. It was more of, of just be prepared for this song when we had this performance. <laughs> <laughs> How great! What, what a what, what, what a great influence. So now you go into you go into college. Mm -hmm. Sports is a big part of your life. You love football. You're in, involved in yep. football and stuff. And yeah. going to college for sports and computer science, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, I was on full ride football scholarship at Illinois State University, and um, my major was computer science. Um, so you're, yes. you're playing football. Let me tell you something. Football is a contact sport. It's it easy, is easy to get beaten up, as we just saw from the it last is. super <laughs> that was happening. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a tough sport. So, you know, did you did you get injured? I mean, what was it like working? You know, playing football and um. Thankfully, I never really got injured that bad in college or in high school. Playing Pop Warner, I broke my wrist, but when I broke my wrist, I just stuck the stick in my cast oh. and played. <laughs> so <laughs> there wasn't it, it wasn't nothing stopping me from practicing. I just was always been very determined to practice, 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 because that's. Boy, how how good! Oh, so much. So you're doing college now, and now you're meeting some musicians in college, right? Yeah, I um I stumbled on the the practice rooms um probably like my first week of school when I was looking for a classroom. I'm like, oh, this is cool. They got drums in here and everything, but it was locked. So it was like, okay, how do I get in here? And they told me, well, you had to be a music major. Well, they also had a gospel choir on um campus called um iyc and i i got in iyc and in the midst of being in iyc i met a couple of the other musicians that were in the music program so then they would like just feed me the codes to get into practice so in between my classes and football practice or like early in the morning i would go go downstairs and practice um and i would do a lot of stuff like that so now you have you have the the school, you know, you know, giving you this opportunity of being able to practice, and you're meeting some musicians. Did you? Yeah. Did you put some bands together in, in university? Um, I did. Uh, well, I got together with a couple of guys. Um, Roberto Quinones, he's a saxophone player, and Tommy Miles, a keyboard player. 
And we used to do Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at this um, hotel lobby where we play jazz, which is the real book. They would just flip through pages of the real book and call out a song, and I would just play. <laughs> that was great. So you had a you had to start to learn some songs. I mean, the real book. For those that don't know, the real book is a is a very very thick book of all jazz standards. Yep. And you can turn page to page on a thousand yeah. Jimmy. You, you know, you'll get tons of yeah different. You know, you know, and and it's, it's a great book to learn tunes from for sure. Yeah. So you play mm. this, 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 this band. They're reading all, all the different real book songs. Mm -hmm. Get a real education in with you know as far as jazz tunes. Yeah, so I was doing that along with playing in the gospel choir. And then I think my sophomore year, sophomore, junior year, um, I was a leasing agent at the apartments that I was living in. And in those apartments, a guy, another guy by the name of Tommy, he's a keyboard player. He had a band with his brother called Blueprint. And it was like we did uh, top 40 stuff, pop stuff. Um, like Maroon Five and Davin, Gavin DeGraw and all all that type of stuff, and uh, with a mix of R and B. So I started playing with that band. So I was doing the jazz, I was doing the gospel choir, and then I was also playing in that band. And so the band would play out on you know Saturdays, Fridays, and then the jazz hit was from seven to eleven. So I would play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Was doing a lot of playing. You 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 were in really, between football. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You're, you're getting some good playing in. You're getting some practicing in. Yeah. Still doing the football training. Mm -hmm. Busy about the football training is the level of discipline that has to happen, both yeah. mentally and physically. And this is extremely mm -hmm. helpful in an instrument to have that level of mental discipline, so you can stay focused and have that level of concentration. And the yeah. physical end of it. Well, you you're working out. You're keeping yourself in good physical condition. So you you're really yeah. like you're putting you're burning the candle at both ends. <laughs> yeah. That, I think that's kind of like what makes it so easy for me to do that now. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of practice at it. Yeah. Well, and, and you're in good shape too. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. So when did your first your first gig was a hip hop gig? Yeah, I um I uh, started with Travis Porter, right? A hip hop group out of Atlanta. Um, it's like really crazy how I got that gig. A, a friend of mine was the, a producer with them, and he told me to come to the studio. And then I met him, and then a couple of days later, I was going on tour. <laughs> and I I played for them when I was in the studio. Um, I kind of snuck into one of the other rooms when they were recording. In an, in the A room, I went into the B room and just started playing to whatever they were recording to. And one of them is a drummer, so he liked it. And then. My boy was like, yo, we're leaving on tour in a couple of days. And <laughs> I started that gig like that. <laughs> and then from there, it just kind of like spiraled into playing with more hip hop artists for a few years. And then um, I got linked up with Roman John Arthur, yeah. who is from Wonderland. He was one of Wonderland's artists. And so that kind of is where I started playing, touring on a different genre. Boy, that is fantastic. So now you're starting to get some experience and yeah. you know, get a taste for what touring is like. And now, you know, mm -hmm. for, for lack of better terms, you're putting your big boy pants on, man. Now you're hitting the road. Yeah. You're getting a feel for what the music industry is like. Yeah, yeah. Putting the fire, putting the fire. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we've got several Sink people. Sink <laughs> It big time, man. You see, yeah. <laughs> we've got several people that are joining us here, which is, which is so great from all around the world. We've got Sean Preston, uh, Angela is art is on here. Yeah, Angie. I play in a band with Angie called a sure thing. What kind of band is that with Angie? We do like all oh, we do everything. We do top 40, we do Latin, we do uh R and B. I mean, it's now, pretty fun. Angie's from, from the Texas area? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Houston. Uh, does she what what is the, does she sing and play an instrument? What what, what is it? She's she's a singer and band leader of, of a sure thing. Fantastic. Angela, very, very good. I look forward to hearing that band someday. It would be fantastic. Yeah. So if you if you check out some of my videos, that's who a lot of times that's who I'm playing with. Well, that's good. I will absolutely go back. <clears throat> to that. Fantastic, Angela. Thanks. We have Brandon here. We've got uh, Carlos Goodspin, who's a phenomenal drummer in the 
in the Florida area. Who's also oh, yeah, Carlos is dope. Carlos is the yeah, best. Brandon, too. Look at this here. Frank White, John Owens, a student of mine from, from North Carolina, is here. <laughs> Tony Esposito, uh, um, Riri Perez, Jeff Towers, and we've got some great, great people here. Yeah. Farago is here, man. Thanks, Rich, for joining us. Jim Royal, who's a phenomenal player from the Connecticut area. Mm -hmm. Paul Patrick Quinn, a phenomenal drummer, but he's an entertainment lawyer in the Florida area. And Paul is just a phenomenal you know, musician. Not only is he a great drummer, yeah. he's a great singer also, too. Nice. I've done many events with him. Mark Bennett joined us here. Look at this here. So Mark. We got some guys. There. So I got a couple of questions here. So <laughs> let's go to Carlos Goodspin here. Let's bring this up here. Let's see what we got here. Carlos Goodman has a question. He goes, um, when did you learn about Mapex drums and what drew you to the company? What's your drum set up now compared to when you first began? So, Leon, see what you got there. What do you think? What would what, what, uh, what you to Mapex? Thank you, Carlos. Um, I think the first time I ever saw a Mapex kit was um, – well, I used to, after I graduated college, I lived in Indianapolis, you know, Indianapolis where they have PASIC. Um, and uh, that's where I met Joe Hibbs um, in 2000, it's either 2009 or two, 2010. No, yeah, I think it was either 2009 or 2010, I met Joe. And that was really the first time I actually like saw a Mapex kit up close and heard a Mapex kit. Um, before that, I had saw it, but I never knew what it was. I didn't know. I didn't know anybody that owned one. But that one time of being at that booth, hearing those drums, playing those drums, and just feeling the energy of how they respond back to you. Yeah. I mean, it's really the bass drum is what got me. That that Orion oh, classic yeah. bass drum. Yeah. Oh, well, my goodness. Kick that thing had, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're, Sure. You're, you mentioned Joe Hibbs. For those that don't know, Joe Hibbs was a phenomenal energy involved with Mapex and KHS, and he was just yeah. a good guy. I knew Joe yeah. well over 40 years. And actually, today is the anniversary of Joe's death. Uh, today, uh, 2016, is when Joe passed away unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a you know, great, great guy, and uh, he helped out so many young drummers. But he, yeah. saw, he saw a talent in you. Leon, that was pretty powerful. I mean, he, you know, it's one thing which Joe did really well. He's been able to see future players and, and hook them up and get them involved. So yeah, that's fantastic. So and it wasn't. It was kind of like a dating thing. Like he didn't sign me right away. It took me a few years. He told me a couple things and sent me in the right direction of a few different things. And would just he would just drop nuggets on me every once in a while. And then finally, you know, I just I I was drawn to him and what he was trying to offer and how he took care of people. That was my favorite thing was I always wanted to, I didn't care about how great the drums were. I just wanted to be taken care of the right way. Yeah. And Joe always offered that. Oh, well, first of all, Joe was what he literally worked seven days a week. Yeah. 24 hours a day. Yeah. 365 days a year. <laughs> yeah. And as we mentioned, I would get a call from Joe Hibbs Every day at yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> he'd get to the company. He'd get there early. Yeah. First call, we would talk, and we'd talk, and just kind of touch base and catch up what mm -hmm. happened. And he wanted to know what I was doing with my traveling and my teaching and books I was writing. Yeah. He just wanted to kind of get information. And he was that kind of guy. And then he'd make a series of calls for all yeah. the people. And uh, so when he saw talent like yourself, he realized this is someone that in the future – it's going to go on. So Joe would be very, very proud of you for sure. As even as we're having this this conversation, good for you, man. Thank yeah, you. yeah. So, um, but to answer the setup question, yeah. Um, my setup usually just depends on what and who I'm playing with. Like, of course, if you're on the road on a big stage, if the if the genre you're playing calls for a lot of drums, then yeah, obviously you don't want to be up there with kick snare hat and couple of times <laughs> and then also it's an aesthetic thing too because i've had setups from 8 10 12 14 16 18 22 20 inch kick drum to literally just a three-piece touring so it just depends on you know what what i'm doing 
I think my favorite thing now is to set up drums weird. I like setting up drums weird and <laughs> make them put a tom over here or over there or, you know, something different. Um, Listen, that, that level of weirdness, I like. I set yeah. up drums 12, 10, <laughs> yep. 16, 14. Oh, I, I did that for a while. I copied it for a good while. <laughs> the, the, the uniqueness of that setup, as I have back with my, my Saturn V that I have behind me here, mm -hmm. it's just a phenomenal you know mixture of sounds. But you yeah. know, right, so sometimes you'll put a floor tom to your left side, or ha ha, we would, yeah. I mean, so some of the ideas that you have are pretty creative. Yeah, yeah. You know, putting some uh, sometimes you know replace the eight, put a fourteen where the eight is. Yeah. You know, it makes you think differently because you have your floor tom sound right in front of you. Yeah. So now it's like you're coming from a 12 to a 10 to a 14. And it's like you got to go this way instead of what you normally do. You know, so it kind of I like tricking my brain. And that's the way I've been able to learn so fast and like learn a lot of stuff is just by doing different stuff to trick my brain. You know, I kind of take off the motto of like, you know, how people uh, work out. And they say like your body will get used to the workouts if you're doing the same workout over and over and over and over again. So you have to trick those muscles into getting built up by doing different stuff. So I just try to adopt that motto. And it's fun. Absolutely. But, but, but <laughs> a great exercise. That, that's a great exercise to do. And, and the uniqueness of the drums when you set them up differently, it mm -hmm. allows us, listen, Drums, you, you you have complete freedom to set the drums up however you want them. Do whatever you want. It's not like you buy a piano and you say, okay, I got a piano. Yeah. I'm going to put the white keys on this side, the black keys <laughs> on this side. Yeah. It, it is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. And But drums, you really can. You can put that 14-inch on that left side where normally that might be the 8 or the 10. And yeah. The first person I saw many, many years ago that did that was Billy Cobham. Yeah. Billy started switching toms. For that exact same reason, when I asked Billy why, he said, why not? It yeah. makes me think differently. Mm -hmm. That's a great attitude that, that you've taken on as far as with that. But yeah. With the process here. So what? So you you join, you, a couple years later, you join the company, you get involved. So what what drums do you have behind you there? Um, I got the Saturn V Aquamarines here. Well, what a beautiful finish. Look at that. Yeah. I think this was, yeah, this was my first kit that I got. Hmm. Um, I got these and then I had kind of have a mixture of a lot of different things because I'm just, I'm kind of like a drum, drum hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you. <laughs> this is, uh, I, I found three toms on, um, I think it was ebay or something like that and these are armories and so you know i'm an artist so i just bought the rest of the drums to add the whole kit and uh yeah i love these these sound i use these a whole lot playing out well they really have a great sound the, the armory is such a wonderful all the models yeah. they have mm -hmm. they have and now the new evolution that they have out oh i can't wait to get my hands on the evolution <laughs> i mean I, I i played instead of the evolution the birch evolution uh huh. And just what a great, a, a great sound, but a great feel. They respond so well. Yeah. With it, I had a chance to play them earlier uh, uh, last year. Just beautiful drums, and just and plus, of course, the design lab that yeah. Villa design, which is a whole nother level of oh, another level. But, but I will say the kit that stays in my studio and that I get a lot of great tone out of, and it's very easy. I have a Mars kit. The old Mars kit. Wasn't that a great kit? Is I have one of the new ones that they brought back. Oh, really? Go now. Yeah. I have one of the new ones. And it it the tone that I get out of it. I mean, of course, if you have a top of the line kit, it's top of the line. It's made to have tone. But for it to be a five, six hundred dollar kit. Oh, it's incredible. I I get the best sound. I don't have to worry about nicking it up or you know, all of that, it just sounds great all the time. So Boy, I love it. That's fantastic. So you got a wide variety between the Saturn, the Armory, and the Mars kit. Yeah, I have a Saturn, the Armory. I have a Mars. Actually, I have two Armories, a Mars. And then, um, I don't Do you remember Gizzy? 
worked in the the um warehouse yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so um rashid used uh i think it was two 18 inch floor toms right that were my identity floor toms for something he did on tv with with uh john legend yeah and they didn't use them anymore they were just sitting in the warehouse and i'm you know in there just checking stuff out i'm like what are y'all doing with those <laughs> <laughs> so gizzy just sent me home with them like exactly. literally just sent me home with them so um i turned one into a bass drum so that's like my little bop kit yeah um and then one is an 18 inch floor tom that i use oh um, that's fantastic yeah, yeah so it's kind of like a different setup but the way i interchange all the drums like i'll use a saturn bass drum and use my armory toms or use the i have a 24 inch mars uh bass drum so i'll use that if i'm playing some rock stuff and then use the toms from the saturn kit or you know i just it's the stuff is very interchangeable and it all has its own identity and sound, but it all sounds great and feels great. Like I never sit down on any one of these kits and feel like I'm trying to struggle to get what I want out of it. Yeah. Well, I, I think what's the, the, the sound of the, of the drums where the shells are made, plus the mm -hmm. hardware, the, the mounts and how they, they yeah. allows you to put the drum wherever you want it. So you can mm -hmm. totally be comfortable and yeah. you can set the drum set around what you like yeah it's with a very very powerful combination boy good for you man that's so yeah, yeah. now mark mark bennett joined us here he's got a question here who are you playing for when i teched for you on prince um that was uh uh shoot nice mark good good here <laughs> um that was um it was either tlc no i think it was tlc I think that was like a it was a festival show. I believe so. What it was, yeah. Yeah, I believe it was TLC festival so you, show. So you, you're doing some dates with Travis Travis Porter, then you hook mm -hmm. up with TLC. How'd you hook up with TLC? I mean, that's an all girl, you know, you know, phenomenal group in what they do. Yeah. Um. So I moved to a, I moved from Indianapolis to Atlanta. My band got signed, mm -hmm. right? So I did this. I had a band called Contraband. I did the band thing for a little bit and then the band broke up and then then i got with travis porter mm. then after that um being in the atlanta scene you know a lot of my favorite drummers actually lived in atlanta and i was just fortunate enough to c connect with lil john roberts who's like a big brother to me now that you know he just helped me so much when i was in atlanta and you know never wanted anything never even asked anything but you know, after a few years of us just being cool and getting to know each other, um, he ended up actually putting me on the gig. It was his gig and he had me fill in for him. And then when I came back, you know, he asked me if I wanted to keep doing it. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'd love to. Mm -hmm. So that's actually how I got on on with TLC. Lil John Roberts, appreciate it, bro. Oh, changed my life. <laughs> what a great player he is changed too. Changed my career. Oh man, I mean, I listen to every, it, I mean, he's, he is one of my drum, like, idols. I listen to every, you know, album that he played on, watched a lot of his videos. I studied him a lot. So being able to just connect with him in a real fashion, not through watching a video or listening to a record, was just awesome. It, it, it's incredible when you think about it, just the, the, the connection that drummers have. You know, yeah, how we are like so intertwined. You mentioned right. you know, all these guys and Rashid and these guys. It, it's such a wonderful family of drummers that just yeah helps each other out, and it's a really a very very unique kind of an industry that we have. Yeah, it's great because we can all be from different backgrounds, do different things, but once them drums come out, we're all the same. It, it's kind of interesting, and, and we all you know. I always see that we there's this incredible desire to want to continue to learn so we're all sharing mm -hmm. ideas with each other and it's just so great to see the workings of everyone just kind of yeah not afraid to share ideas and try things out yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty amazing now tell me how you got the name you know quick sticks um so i did a couple of dates with um bo diddley when i was in college mm -hmm. um and i guess one of the shows he just 
called me quick sticks. He was like, yeah, that boy quick with them sticks. <laughs> and so um, then uh, another uh, uh, guy who lived in Indianapolis that I worked with, um, he's a trumpet player. He just started calling me that after after a while. So then it just kind of caught on. And then my mom was like, well, why don't you don't spell it with a Q? Your last name starts with a K, so spell it with a K. So then once she said that, it kind of like just solidified it that, okay, I guess I just better go by Quick Sticks. That's fine. <laughs> your, your mom is a marketing genius. Good she person. is. <laughs> That's hysterical. That's great. Yeah. So then you, so, so and again, on your, your Instagram, it's at mm -hmm. Quick Sticks. Yep. K-W-I-K-S-T-I-K-S. -I Quick Sticks with no Cs. There it is. And you've got... Twitter's the same thing, mm -hmm. and your Facebook is, is, is your name, Leon Cottrell. Cottrell, yep. Okay, good. So those are people, I want people to be able to kind of connect with you and find out kind of where you are and what's happening. As pe more people are joining us here, which is so great to see. Uh, we yeah. Are. Let's talk about your studio now. You got a studio at your yes. home there. You got mm -hmm. it kind of mic'd up with, with cameras and stuff like that. You've got, yep. the, you know, so how, how is that now to have you doing some recording from there? Um, I work, I'm also a producer. So, and I record as well. Um, I engineer as well. Um, all like nice. kind of self-taught, um, um, just from working with people. You know, I, when we had our own band, we kind of were at the mercy of whatever the label wanted to pay for us. So they didn't want to pay for us to learn how to work all this stuff that we had. So we just kind of like had to learn how to work it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first time I started, Logic was the first program I ever worked in. Well, I take that back. Reason, my brother's a producer. My When I was probably about 13 or 14, my brother was showing me some stuff on Reason and this little DR, DR5, I think it was called, this ah. little beat machine, <laughs> old beat machine. So I worked with that. That was kind of like my first production introduction to producing but um now i use logic um i have the se mics which are uh they're so amazing i just can't like stress enough that it makes it so much easier when you have good quality mics like especially seelectronics.com yeah. is the name of the microphone i also endorse them and equally to yourself i am so impressed with the quality of microphone that's what i have yeah. Above my, I've got all the uh -huh. all, the, all the, the overheads that I have here, and uh, yeah. they, they just sound fantastic, right? Yeah, and the options that you get on each mic, like yeah. you know, kick drum mic with a modern and a, a um, classic, you know, options. I've never really had a kick drum mic where you had options where you can get different sounds. It's kind of like just put the kick drum mic in there and you post everything, you know. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. It really, really, yeah. It's amazing. So SC Electronics, you got so you got yep. the drums all mic'd up, and yeah. um, and, and you got the studio. So you when you produce, mm -hmm. you're able to play drums on it, produce and work, and your engineering. Yep. So you're yeah. Several different hats to make this all go on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like the times we're in nowadays. You have to do everything. Yeah. Um, because it, it's you know getting stuff out in a timely matter is really. A thing, so you can't really wait for somebody to to put drums on something or mix your drums or you know do all that. And I use um, I have the Behringer X18, which is great right. um, because I can take it out of the house and use it live and record that session, whatever we're doing. Then bring it home, have it there, use it. It's you know preamps are great. You have Wi-Fi capabilities where you can control it from, you know, a lot of different stuff. So I love it. I love using it. Boy, that's fantastic. It's really fantastic. Now, you're also doing I think you're also on Lesson Squad, right? Yes. Yeah, I teach. Uh, I teach. I can't really say I'm qualified to teach, but <laughs> I teach what I can. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't make yourself, Liam. You've got an incredible natural ability, and you understand the instrument very, very well. Listen, yeah, Buddy Rich never took lessons. So uh, yeah. bottom line is, yeah, know, and he was qualified. So I, <laughs> right. I'm just very good at I can because of the way I've had to learn, I can break down anything I do like slow to fast. And that's how I learned it. I started working on it slow and just up the BPMs until I get it to, you know, whatever 
whatever tempo that I wanted at, but I also try to make sure that it sounds clear and it's, you know, everything's spaced out and, you know, clarity is definitely just something that I work on a lot. Listen, you can hear it in your sound. I mean, in you know, what yeah. you're doing, especially on, on the internet, some of the YouTube stuff, is mm -hmm. sound is so beautiful and so clean. And, you know, part of education is sharing information, but it's also inspiring people. I think when you mm -hmm. inspire people to, to want to play and let them find their own talent level, yeah, that's what it's about. So I'd say anyone that's here within the sound of our voice, lessonsquad.com, mm -hmm. go click on Lee and Cottrell. And, and go in there and really kind of, you know, sit down and spend some sessions with him and have some fun with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show you anything I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> and whatever else you want to know, I probably can figure it out. But uh, I could definitely show you anything that I know. That is great. So talk yeah. about, so you, you had some online performances. You've done some things, right? You're, now with the pandemic, it's been a crazy time. I mean, you know, there's... Some gigs that are out there that you're doing right, and yeah, online uh, what's that like? I've done a couple of streams. Um, we I do every Tuesday. I do this. Um, it's a showcase for different artists. Uh, a guy named Phil Wade, who's an artist himself. Uh -huh. He's an artist and comedian. Um, and um, we do it every week, and there's a different artist every week but we've also streamed a couple of times we've done that a couple of times um we've streamed with the shirt thing we did a, a live streaming performance at um this place called r and r studios here where it is a uh basically a streaming stage like they, he has performances almost every day of the week nice this guy lets people come in his studio and he records you he streams it all live and it's all donation based. It's all like he doesn't charge us to do it, you know. So it, it's it's a really cool concept of what he does. What he does, it's like a streaming stage. I think it's kind of like what he calls it. Wow. But Roger Roger Ramirez R and R Studios. It's super dope. Great, great idea, boy. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, you'll have to yeah. let us know on your social media when you're doing these here. Oh but yes, for sure. On there, let everyone know, and we'll we'll go there and join in on it and check it out. I mean, that sounds yeah, cool. yeah. Well, this is so great. You know, we've got so many people here, right? Yeah, you, 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 Jerry. Oh man, you. I love cool. Jerry, man. This is Jerry Goldenson, who is the he, he's the the head honcho at KHS with Mapex of what we're doing. Thanks for all you yeah. done. Great energy and always a positive message. And you're yeah. a member of the family. Thank you, Jerry, for stopping by. Yeah. That's fantastic. Jerry was actually the second person that I met at Mapex. I talked to Joe, and then Joe, Jerry was telling Joe that he needed to go eat lunch <laughs> <laughs> at PASIC. And I met Jerry then, and, you know, uh, he, he just kind of, they both kind of just put an impression on me that hasn't, allowed me to kind of get away from mapex yeah like even if i tried like i went i was with another drum company before and i was trying to leave them and come to mapex and joe's like no not yet you just a couple more things you need to learn there's a couple more things you need to do do this and do that and then finally when joe got ready to bring me on it's just been like a, a great experience ever you know I can't stress enough that Mapex takes care of you like you are family. It doesn't matter if you're the top drummer. It doesn't matter if you're the lowest drummer. I've never been treated like that. Yeah. I've been in places where it's like, oh, certain drummers are coming in where you kind of get thrown to the side. And it's not on purpose. I understand that they have to, you know, tend to the people that make them money. But, yeah. you know, it's like, well, there's other companies that do it because I'm with Mapex now and they make me make everybody feel great <laughs> so. that comes down from the vision of uh, of jerry jerry yeah is a, is, a, is a wonderful you know you know sp yeah. spirit of a person and that yeah and that comes to the top that gets mm -hmm. throughout the company and that becomes the yeah. culture which is extremely healthy and which is the best way of doing it because everyone gets treated the same way mm -hmm. it makes it fun and you know ideas that you have and ideas that we're sharing back and forth it really is a of, of, of really just a great atmosphere where not only yeah. we make great product, right? Got great people behind it. The mm -hmm. Bennett's, 
the Jeff Mulvihills, the Rick. DeYoung, oh yeah, Rick the Young. These are people that are really you know just great people behind the scenes that are working their tail off to kind of make yeah. it happen. Yeah. Boy, how fantastic! Really, really fantastic. And you know, as we said before, uh, Bob Terry joined us up here too. Bob Terry. Bob, I love Bob. Another great, great guy. That uh, yeah. Phenomenal player, just an incredibly knowledgeable drummer himself. And it's incredible yeah. to see all these people that come by here. Well, I'll tell you something. You're doing some great, great things, Leon. You really, really are. You've got the, the lesson squad.com. I want everyone to understand that. Mm -hmm. I would highly suggest anyone to go out there and take a couple of lessons with, 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 with Leon and just sit down and have some fun together. Yeah. Bands that you've done, two chains and all those different bands that you've done. <laughs> you've got some good, good stuff behind you. <laughs> Woodland Records. You had what you did some things with Woodland Records years ago, right? Wonderland, Wonderland. What was it? That that's Wonderland. That's Wonderland. 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 That's um Janelle Monet's label. Um, I was working with um Roman John Arthur first was the artist that I started with right. a couple of for a couple of years, and then um they kind of expanded and and well they've always had more than one artist. Yeah. But then then they decided to do like a, a actual label label with all four of the artists and then we did a tour with all four of the artists right. um that was really cool so and they're all kind of like different genres like roman was more um soul yeah. then you had deep cotton as like a rock group the crazy crazy rock group then you had uh jadena who's a rapper um and then saint beauty who are like singer songwriters but but even saying that each one of the artists can do pop you know rap yeah. rock they all kind of do it all so it was just a great experience being part of that camp and uh uh they definitely groomed me into being a better musician and a better person wow. in the industry wow and and wonderland they're located where in atlanta i believe still unless they moved to la <laughs> I know it's kind of everything's kind of like bi coastal in the industry right now. So, yeah, yeah it really is kind of crazy with the industry is changing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. this is fantastic that you are a part of May Picture. You're doing some great, great things. I wish you the best of luck. Keep Thank on, you. Thank you. Keep pushing it hard. Enjoy your studio there. Keep on producing. <laughs> keep on posting more videos. Again, go to Leon's YouTube channel. Yep. Under your name, Leon Cottrell. You can go there and make mm -hmm. that. A Twitter again is is um, Quick Sticks with a K. Yes, sir. And also Instagram is at Quick Sticks. K W I K S T I K S. Quick Sticks. Yep. Thank yeah. You. And I just want to thank you so much, Dom. Like uh, I've been a fan for a long time. Then also getting a chance to meet you a few different times before being a Mapex artist, and then you really treat me like family. It's like kind of like surreal. It's sort of like when I met Lil John, you know, meeting one of your idols and them actually treating you like you're you're one of their friends or you know, what I mean, just as as a good person, it it's it it adds on and adds on to the person that you are and also like the player that you are. It shows that shows your your energy as a person shows in your playing. Well, that's incredible. Now I understand. You can put the two and two together. Like, oh, okay, that's why he plays like that. He's a dope person. <laughs> well, thank you so much. But, you know, I, I see players like yourself, Leon, where you are the next generation of where this art form is going. You are playing sincerely. You're working hard. You're experimenting. You're learning. You're constantly growing between all the different things you're doing, between playing drums, between producing, between engineering. You're really kind of learning the craft that what we do and yeah. that you really are this next generation that yeah. take this drumming well into the 21st century. For that, <laughs> I thank you so much. And for that, on behalf of Mapex, we thank you so much. Stay well, stay safe. I want everyone out there, thank you so much for joining us here and uh, being a part of this. This will go on to Mapex's Facebook page. And yes. then it'll be put onto Mapex's YouTube channel. So you can go by there. Yeah. It'll be there when you get a chance, Leon, go back and answer everybody's response that was on here too. Have some yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Stay well. <laughs> Thank you, you too, Dom. Thank you so much, Leon. All right, man. Fantastic.